What's up YouTube peeps? This is a video talking about my medical school application cycle. I'll talk about where I applied, where I got in, what my stats and everything were. I'll try to give you everything that I got. And also what my essays were like and then some other thoughts and advice. This is a whole. I want to preface this by saying the reason why I chose to make a video like this was to provide information for folks who are currently, like I was, when I was entering the pre-med kind of cycle, uh, I was interested in content that, you know, where folks would share uh, what their application was like, where they got in, that kind of thing. It was very helpful for me to gauge, for example, what kind of medical schools I should be applying to in the first place, how competitive I was, that sort of thing. And just to get a sense of, of what applicants were like and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, let's jump right in. First, where did I apply? Uh, where did I get in? Where did I get interviews? That kind of thing. So, I applied to 16 schools originally in the primary applications. I'm not sure if I'll be clever enough to put little animation text on, uh, but, you know, apologize. apologies if not. Here we go. From the top, ordered by preference, I had a whole spreadsheet, which I recommend. Uh, I applied to, let's see, Harvard, UCSF, Johns Hopkins, uh, Penn, Columbia, Yale, Stanford, Duke, NYU, Pitt, uh, University of Washington, UCLA, Michigan, uh, Wash U in St. Louis, uh, Mayo Clinic, uh, University of Chicago, and Icon School of Medicine uh, in Mount Sinai. Great programs, uh, and especially I was focused on psychiatry, uh, research, and leadership. Those were my kind of main three things, and so I focused on medical schools that I knew had really strong programs in psychiatry, in research, and in leadership and kind of interpersonal uh, work, that sort of thing. I'm particularly focused in general on sort of community type work, I think, going forward. And so these programs also were strong in those fields. That's why I chose them. So uh, moving on to where I did my secondary application. Uh, I did a secondary at everywhere except for uh, University of Chicago. Sorry, University of Chicago. Um, not that, I don't know, maybe they wouldn't have wanted me anyway, but uh, I had already received an acceptance by then, uh, and so I didn't end up doing my secondary. My cycle was very much dragged on. I'll talk about the timeline in a little bit. Okay, so what about interviews? I ended up getting rejected pre-interview from UCSF, Duke, UCLA, and Michigan. So I ended up with interviews to all of the others, which was very exciting. On to acceptances, I ended up getting acceptances uh, to Harvard, uh, to Penn, Yale, Pitt, uh, and Wash U School of Medicine. So very, very exciting. In terms of wait lists, I ended up getting waitlisted at uh, Hopkins, Stanford, NYU, Mayo Clinic, and Icon in Mount Sinai, and the other ones were rejections. So, and in terms of where I ended up, I'll probably be headed to Harvard Medical School in the fall, which is incredibly exciting, a huge dream school, and something I'm, I'm thrilled, um, you know, an incredible opportunity. In terms of stats and whatnot, and the rest of my, the kind of meat of my application, stats-wise, my GPA overall, is, uh, whenever I applied, was a 3.94. Again, at UNC Chapel Hill. Uh, I'm not sure about science versus non-science, um, but I don't think I lost points in non-science. So I think um, most of those uh, GPA deductions were within science classes. Uh, for my MCAT score, I ended up with a 523. Very exciting. I'll talk about how I studied for that in just a sec. my um, other elements of my application. In terms of extracurriculars, I had done a few service projects, some research, and some EMS work as, as an EMT in transport. Now, 
I'll run through all three of those just real quickly. In terms of service projects, I had started uh, joining some clubs and working with other institu you know, uh, um, organizations. I ended up moving on to starting my own kind of organizations focused on things that I was really particularly passionate about. I ended up starting an organization called the Teach Initiative that's working on mental health and substance use education in North Carolina high schools um, and other kind of uh, spaces. It was incredibly important to me for a variety of reasons that I won't get into, uh, but it, you know, something I was, I was passionate about. I've also done some work along the lines of Cherokee language revitalization, another personal passion project and something that, uh, you know, I've been excited about. I want to say for both of those, it's critical to point out that those are the result of a ton of work by a ton of people, not just me. I got massive amount of support from other folks at UNC and elsewhere. Uh, so huge, huge props to those folks. Uh, and I want to be clear, none of that would have been remotely possible if I had been trying to do things by myself. So maybe first tip, team building is super important. Um, and uh, of course, you know, having folks around who are ready to jump in and help is uh, legendary. So that's that um, and various other kind of um, smaller service projects but those are the main two in terms of research i have been working in a research lab at unc uh, since my first year there uh, i have kind of moved up and done some more independent projects a lot of my research especially work in cell culture working with neurons and microglia has been pretty dramatically unsuccessful so I say that because if there are any folks out there who are doing research and their research hasn't been working out, trust me, I've been there for years. I know the feeling. So that's been the case with a lot of my research. I ended up being able to pull some stuff together and I finished my honors thesis recently. So I have uh, done the kind of research progression. Uh, but you should know that if research isn't working out for whatever reason, you know, I've been there and I know the feeling. On, I also was part of another uh, research project working on mental health uh, and, and substance use and whatnot in UNC students, kind of a survey-based project uh, as distinct from my kind of cell culture, animal behavior type work in the first lab. Both of those were great and very much exploratory. I'll talk in a bit of, about kind of exploring your passions. And again, for that, for both of those, it was just things that I was personally interested in. That's that. Now, last thing, uh, EMS work and generally exploring medicine. I did a little bit of shadowing, not a ton. I shadowed, I think, maybe five-ish, maybe ten-ish physicians. Uh, usually not for a long time, just for about a day for the most part, or a couple days. Great experiences, though. I learned a lot about medicine and learned a lot especially about options of careers in medicine. More importantly, though, I did a lot of EMS work. I started as an EMT around when COVID hit. That was my sophomore year. I had gotten pulled back from my study abroad program, uh, so I tried to become an EMT. I was mostly, or entirely, I've worked in transport, not in 911 type uh, emergency medical services. It's been an incredible experience for me, especially as someone who's interested in psychiatry and transport. We're not dealing with super emergent cases, right? We're just kind of taking people from place to place. What that means is that you have the opportunity to chat with incredible folks all the time for hours on end sometimes. So that's been a wonderful experience and something that I highly recommend in terms of exploring whether you really would enjoy medicine. Those are some of my extracurriculars. In terms of my essays, I wrote about a lot of stuff, mostly very personal stuff. I kind of got into why I'm interested in medicine, why I'm interested in psychiatry in particular. One of the main points in a lot of my essays was the idea that I've spent time exploring and have come to the conclusion based on evidence that medicine is right for me, which is true. I don't have any family that are physicians or anything like that. I thought for a long time that I wanted to go purely research and various other uh, options and whatnot. I just have tried a ton of stuff and eventually settled down on, yeah, okay, clearly I have thoroughly enjoyed my experiences in medicine. They've kind of clicked with my brain in a way that other things don't, and so this is something that I need to be doing in my career. That I think, um, I hope was compelling, uh, the idea that, you know, I've, I've kind of tried different things and found, yep, yeah, this is the thing. 
Then also, of course, there's other sort of personal thoughts. I told a lot of stories. I tended to not try to just list things because you do have the opportunity to share all of your um, extracurriculars and whatnot in the application elsewhere. So I tried to not just list, um, but definitely, you know, I told a lot of stories and gave a sense of, uh, tried to give a sense of the kind of person that I was and why I was interested. That's that. Now, um, those are, that's the essays, the uh, stats, the everything. Last thing I want to share is a little bit of uh, just some advice that I picked up during the cycle that people told me that I want to pass on to anyone watching my YouTube video. So uh, first off, the timeline. The advice that I received is that applying kind of in the middle of the cycle is actually sometimes a good thing and that applying early is not always super ideal. This is very controversial. You'll hear from almost all like pre-med advisors and whatnot, at least I did, that you have to apply as early as possible, otherwise you're toast. It's not true. At least according to, I talked to a, uh, a person affiliated with Johns Hopkins admissions, and he said that applying early is not necessarily a great thing. Why? Because you're compared against the best of the best. The idea is that the people who are most on top of things, who are ready to rock, are applying as soon as possible. But if you apply a little bit later on, you're compared more with folks who are slightly less kind of put together. I don't know. I was in that group, uh, so I, you know, just took a while for me to kind of get everything together. So you're compared against other folks who are similarly a little bit behind. You don't want to apply dramatically late, just because things fill up. Uh, but you know, whenever you apply, um, it's not necessarily critical to get it super early. For my cycle, I did the MCAT a month after my junior year of college ended. I'm currently a senior at UNC, so I did my MCAT, uh, or I did my, yeah, MCAT in uh, June, right? I finished the semester around May-ish, did the thing in June, got scores back around July, and submitted the primary application then, uh, and then I did my secondaries for a while afterwards. So that's my timeline. Other thoughts that I have heard and that I think are really important, the main one being that it's critical to do things that interest you, right? You want to do things that interest you. Why? Because you want to be able to speak to them and be able to say why you did them. You want to be able to talk about them well, for example, in research, right? You want to do research that you personally find exciting. If you find it exciting, you'll explore as much as you can. You'll read a bunch of papers. You'll get into it. And then once somebody asks you about it, you'll be able to share all kinds of thoughts about that sort of thing, about your research, about why you did what you did, etc. Same goes for EMS, same goes for whatever. Also, I think it's critical to be aware of what you're interested in, to kind of check in. What am I interested in? What do I have time for? It's very important. And how can I be doing the things I'm excited about at the maximum of my capacity? A couple things there, right? Kind of three things. Number one, again, if you find that what you're interested in isn't medicine, okay, there are a lot of, lot of ways, fabulous ways to help people, to get involved, to support folks, etc. I considered a lot of these different options and many of them are excellent. If you find that what you're pulled to is not necessarily the pre-med stuff, cool. You'll have, I think, a wonderful career doing whatever those things are. Or, you know, if you want to pursue medicine, obviously, you know, do so, uh, but I think be cognizant of what you're being pulled to intrinsically. Also there, in terms of being most efficient, make sure you keep track of the things you get yourself into. I have definitely overscheduled myself. Some of that was good, frankly. Early on, I overscheduled myself quite a lot. I ended up having kind of a terrible semester. I didn't sleep a lot. It was awful. That said, it set me up really well for having things on my resume that I ended up applying with and, and getting in with. That said, as time went on, I wanted to make sure that those things that I had started during my super intense time, I wanted to make sure that I was doing them to the most of, to the you know to my kind of maximal capacity, and so I dropped back on a lot of things to make sure that I could focus on the things that I wanted to do and really do them well.
that's really critical. I hope you all do that too. Make sure that whatever you're doing, you're doing it well. The last thing on that, sleep. Please sleep. Just do it. Uh, it's really important. I will say this. I have rarely, you know, I know a lot of folks will say, I can't sleep because I need to do such and such. Acutely, I understand, 100% there have been many times, not before tests, but many times when you need to do some kind of project. In my personal experience, when I've had to just, you know, you just gotta pull an all-nighter and do some sort of project. I get it, that sort of thing happens from time to time. Chronically losing sleep, though, makes you inefficient. I've done this, so I know. It makes you inefficient, and what that inefficiency means is that you don't get enough out of your time. So whenever you're really chronically sleep deprived, you're not getting your money's worth of the time that you do have, and so you end up actually having less effective time than you would have if you spent the extra few hours sleeping and then were able to be really sharp during the waking hours. That's important and something that I hope you all do as well. Also, of course, exercise, keep taking care of yourself, etc. All these things are really critical. I'm someone with ADHD. If you also have ADHD, exercise can be very important. Keep active. Um, I find myself incredibly distractible, always, but especially whenever I don't exercise. So that's also important. Okay, so that's all the thoughts I have for you today. Um, thank you so much for watching my YouTube video, uh, and I'm excited for your journey. Uh, good luck to you, uh, and, and I'm, I'm sure you'll kill it and have a great time. Thanks.